Welcome to the Explore Composites Materials Library. This is Laminate Sample 43A. This one is a vacuum bagged, stitched, binder free chop strand mat, laminated in West System Epoxy over a half inch grit PET recycled core. There's another sample, number 43B, which is the same materials but infused. And that will be the next one. Here's this material, it's a vector ply EM0015, 13 ounce or about 450 gram stitched chop strand mat. And this can be compared to a more typical bindered chop strand mat like this, um, which has got no stitching and is held together with either a powder or an emulsion binder that dissolves in styrene and makes it break down nicely. The binder also makes it incompatible-ish with epoxy. Uh, and so this stitched material um, is a completely epoxy compatible and has some beneficial properties. Here's a look at the core. There's a contour scrim, 80 kilo core. It's got some pretty big kerfs in there. And um, in the next video, 43B, take a look at the volume of resin that a contour scrim soaks up. Alternative especially for flat panels, core with just perforations. And here is some double cut and on this side, triple cut core that takes up a lot less resin in an infusion process and still provides conformability. So here we go, laying it up. This is West System 105-205 epoxy, the fast one. And I'm just gonna wet out this material on the table. You can see the stitching in there. This has pretty much the same amount of fiber running in every direction. As best I can tell from the data sheet, it looks like it. So the fiber distribution is relatively quasi-isotropic. And it does like its resin. I wet this one out with the West system, estimated based on weight, and had to come back and make some more. So I'm wetting it out with a squeegee. I'm just gonna stack them both up. You couldn't really do this with chop strand mat, binder chop in a styrene based resin because the binder would break down and then you could never pull them apart. But here you can wet them out one on top of the other and then just pull them back apart again. The stitching holds everything together. So effectively this works just like any other stitched reinforcement. It's just a little looser. And uh, here's the extra batch of resin to wet that through, give it a good roll to make sure I got enough in here. I'm not gonna wet the core, just gonna get enough resin in the skins. Part of this combination with the uh, next video, which will have the infusion sample, is to show how much resin the core curves take up. So here I'm purposely not filling those core curves, although in a real situation, you'd probably wanna use some putty or something like that to fill those in. So here's the foam. Place this down, curve side down, as you would if you were bending it into a, a sort of a concave surface. And um, you can see the contour cuts there. The squares on the contour scrim are 30 millimeter square. So it's quite conformable. Now I flop the top skin back down on top and uh, just give it a quick roll. Here is the Compaflex. This is Compaflex SB250. Show a little more about that later on. It is a combination peel ply, uh, release film, and breather all in one. Works really nicely for flat panels. It's pretty stiff, so for very curvy things, it's a challenge. Now, in these samples, sometimes I do things wrong to show stuff. Sometimes I just do them wrong. And this is a case of both of those things. This table has got a very slippery Zyvax water shield release on it. And when I went to stick the bag down, I thought, oh, I'll wipe it with acetone and then it'll stick. And what I'm finding here is that even after I wiped it with acetone, the sealant tape and the other tape really doesn't stick. So I've come back, wipe it some more with a uh, 
mold cleaner. And we're going to see how that goes. Here I am trying again with the acetone. That didn't work out. So I'm going to come back with some heavy duty stinky stuff. And in hindsight, I should have grabbed a respirator too because it smelled terrible. And it's definitely not good stuff to breathe. But this is meant for stripping release off molds. And um, it's coming through and just taking everything off there in hopes that get most of that release off and be able to stick the sealant tape. Because this is fast west system, I don't have an awful lot of time. So I'm starting to worry here that it's going to get hot and cure before I get the bag on. But it sticks okay uh, enough that it kind of stays in place. It's certainly not good. And um, in a part where you're using a high slip release like this, it would be good to mask off the perimeter with tape when you apply your release or systematically come back and remove the release. So this is a case where I went to do a little mistake and ended up making a much bigger one. But hopefully that gives someone a heads up on this possibility and uh, they don't have to experience this problem because it's pretty easy to solve. So I had some trouble in the corners and uh, to come back and pile up the tape, add a little masking. Here's a big, just a look at how not sticky this is. The sealant tape just doesn't stick. The masking tape doesn't stick at all. And so I end up having to kind of fake it in the corners and uh, that glove box is definitely holding the sealant tape down. So I came back the next day, demolded it, popped off really easily. So that's very slippery stuff. And here's a look at the Compaflex. This is SB250. Back in sample number 11, I used this for infusion, thinking it was SB150 and it didn't work out so well. So I'm uh, using it for what it's supposed to be for here and it, it works great. Here's a look at the finished sample. You can see the chopped strands going every which way. And uh, when we compare this to the infused one in the next sample, it's pretty obvious how much air is trapped in this and also how little the core curves are filled. And for some things, this is totally fine. And a light putty would be great, but compare that to the infused one and see just how heavy it is to fill the core curves. The weight on this, 12 and a half ounces, so 354 grams, and it came out about 0.544 inches thick, which is a little thinner than I had anticipated. And as a quick look at the number 43B, which I'll do next, showing the infused bits and just how much resin is in there. So thanks for checking it out. Uh, have a look at explorecomposites.com for more information. And I'll see you on the next one.